and when she unzips the side of the pillowcase, a cat comes out. Hello and welcome back to Witch Fix. Today I'm going to be talking about the movie of a book that I reviewed recently, which is called The Witches uh, by Peter Curtis. And I said at the time that I had a copy of that film in the post on its way to me and it arrived, I think, yesterday and I decided to watch it today because why not? There's nothing else that much going on in my life today. So I've just finished watching it and I thought I'd review it for you guys. It wasn't good. There, end of review. Uh, I'm going to try and steer away from criticising the film for being dated uh, or things being weird with it because it's dated because obviously it was made in the 1960s. It's going to be a bit dated. I was just glad that it was in colour. Anywho, the book actually starts later than the film does so the book starts with Miss Mayfield attending an interview for the position of head teacher in Woolwick the film starts in Africa so she's in a, a mission school in Africa played by Joan Fontaine she kind of looks like a young Margaret Thatcher she's got a very lacquered helmet of blonde hair very very pale for someone who is you know in Africa and has been there for ostensibly a while. She literally looks like a piece of A4 paper that someone's drawn some eyes on. But there we go. And she's frantically trying to pack up all the school stuff and there's two guys with her who I think are called Adam and Mark but we don't really see a lot of them because about 10 seconds after they're introduced they climb out of a window and run away. And that's because um, a voodoo doll knife just kind of gets like it, I don't know where it got thrown from, but it kind of just flips and stabs into a table and it's like a big knife and it's got kind of a weird voodoo doll fetish thing on one end and they freak out and they jump out the window and run away. Um, Miss Mayfield, undaunted, continues to pack books and then the wall at the far end of the school kind of starts shaking, the door bursts open and then a bunch of like mask-wearing people come in except it's not really like wearing a mask it's like a full body mask like those kind of weird african masks that you occasionally see at car boot sales and things that i guess people bought as souvenirs from somewhere like that but for your full body and with eyes that kind of look like they're made of pringle cans which was very odd anyway they kind of approach her and she screams and crumples to the floor and then some credits happen because this was the time when we put credits at the beginning of movies for some fucking reason and then we actually get to what was the first scene of the book, the interview, and subsequently um, Miss Mayfield's arrival in the village. Now, she drives herself there, which quite a lot of the plot of the book revolved around the fact that the village was quite remote, that it didn't actually have a bus service, and that very few people owned cars, especially not Miss Mayfield herself. So for quite a lot of it, she was reliant on lifts or she couldn't get places and... That kind of added to the feeling of isolation and horror in that she couldn't just, you know, get in her car and screech the fuck out of there like, nope, not going to happen today. But no, she has a car now. Yet she still doesn't drive away, which is kind of weird to me because a lot of shit stuff happens to her. Anywho, she, on the way into the village, passes the butcher who's just kind of standing in the doorway of the butcher shop. And she stops and kind of asks for directions. And he's just polishing a big knife on his apron. And continues to polish it while he talks to her. And then the camera watches him polish it for, I'm not kidding, like a full minute after she is driven out of shot. So, that's pretty sinister. If it wasn't so fucking ridiculous. I say village because the name of the village has changed from Warwick to Hedeby. Uh, the canon... Uh, I forget his last name in the book, but his whole name has changed. He's no longer a canon. His last name is the is Bax. Uh, his house is referred to as the Bax's house. Um, his sister's name has also changed from Isabel to Stephanie, and she's now some kind of writer instead of just a slightly odd lady who doesn't do anything. And Alan Bax, instead of like Canon Thornby, is actually now not associated with the church at all. He just sometimes likes to put on a vicar's collar and pretend to be a vicar. And he does mention this. Um, he kind of gets found out by um, Miss Mayfield. His sister kind of tattles on him and is like, yeah, he's not really a vicar. And then he takes her to the church, which in this version is a ruin and not just, you know, the normal church. And he just tells her, you know, sometimes I like to dress up as a vicar because... I didn't manage to become a vicar, but it makes me feel better somehow. And she tells him this and she 
she, she he tells her this and then she kind of like walks backwards from him in horror with her arms up like kind of like snow white in the animated snow white where she's running through all the trees and she's got her arms up like oh no and she kind of gives him a look like he's just said that he sometimes likes to eat women's underwear it's really odd and she doesn't say anything she just leaves and it's like well you came here together how are you gonna get home it's just very odd anywho I don't really know why they changed all the names. I did a quick look for Warwick and it's not a real place and neither is Hedeby. So I don't think they changed it because they didn't want it to refer to a real place. Likewise, I don't know why they need to change the character names just for funs and giggles. Um, I guess maybe they might change it so he's not actually a priest or a reverend or whatever. So that it's maybe, I guess, less offensive towards the church. Even though in the book he's not actually one of the witches. He's just a guy who lets the witches do whatever so yeah, it kind of annoys me when people change character names for literally no reason like shits and gigs and a lot of the names in the story have changed but like from like elaine to linda or something and it's just really odd that they just decided you know what the name in the book wasn't good enough let's just replace it with an equally pedestrian name from nowhere it does however make a lot more sense that the church is like a ruin um, because obviously the final part of the book like the big satanic witch ritual goes down at the church and it just makes more sense if it's a ruined church that isn't currently in use as opposed to them breaking into or using a in use church um, and then having to clear up afterwards it just seems like this makes a lot more sense plot wise. We then just kind of watch Miss Mayfield go around town smiling and waving at people and to be honest the acting is not that great from any of the people in the film but I feel like in older films none of the acting was actually very good um, you just kind of got the impression that people were just pretending to be other people as opposed to actually acting and it's just it was very strange and very odd to watch also everyone seems a lot more stylish than people in the country generally are like Miss Mayfield in particular is meant to be kind of a dowdy 44 year old schoolmistress and she's going around in quite sharp new looking clothes with like her Margaret Thatcher hair helmet and her little court shoes and she generally looks just quite well turned out and not in any sense um, poor or down at heel which is what her character was in the book. Also we don't really get any information about the school she was at prior to coming to the village which also sort of helped build up her character a little bit in the um, book because obviously she'd been at a poor inner city school and she'd been sharing digs with other teachers and now she gets to stay in this amazing cottage by herself and it's lovely. And that kind of added something to the reasons why she would want to stay in the village. We don't have that in the film. Then there's some sort of shots of Linda and the guy, um, the other schoolboy that she's sort of palling around with and all the people in the village are like, ooh, they's courting have you ever seen the like etc etc and they kind of try and impress on miss mayfield the importance of keeping those two apart and after a bit miss mayfield kind of asks alan the not vicar why that's so important and he just kind of inhales deeply through his nose and then walks off and it's like i don't know how people ended conversations in the 60s because usually if someone asks you something that you don't want to tell them you're change the subject or you'll kind of warn them off like you'll say something you won't just go <sighs> and then fuck off it's just very strange so in the film miss mayfield's mental breakdown that she had um which caused her to have to leave africa is directly linked to the events at the start of the film which is classed as a witch doctor rebellion against the mission school in the actual book it's a lot more vague they just kind of say that her health deteriorated while she was in Africa and she had to leave and it's not clear if that was like a physical thing of like maybe she was just exhausted and it was hot and you know all the rest of it uh, but here it's definitely the fact you know witch doctors stormed the school in masks and her brain just snapped um, so that's great and we get to see more of this snapping because she kind of wakes up in bed one morning and thinks she sees the voodoo knife thing on her bedside table but it turns out to be a feather duster which seems to have been purposefully designed to resemble that knife and then a little bit later she wakes up in the middle of the night and there's some sort of weird figurine um, 
in the room and when she goes to the door and tries to run out the mask guy with the pringle can eyes is there and he chases her and her mind snaps again and she wakes up in a hospital uh, although that's a little bit similar to what happens in the book in that she's hospitalized because a desk lid falls on her head and takes her memory away in this her fragile mind just snaps and she gets put in a nursing home to recuperate Thankfully, she does escape a lot quicker than she does in the book. In the book, it takes for fucking ever. But it feels like it's still taking a very long time because in a book, you can skim, whereas in a film, you can't because you might miss something. Um, so it, it feels like it does take a long time. She makes her way then back to the village by hitchhiking and then goes straight to the house of the not vicar and his sister, Stephanie, who is previously talked to her about the locals being into witchcraft and suggested that they should write an article together because Stephanie writes articles for the paper and she goes there because she's like my only friend and then while she's resting up in like a guest room at the house she decides to try and go outside and uh, the door is locked but then is mysteriously unlocked by someone who when she opens the door they're not there I still don't know who unlocked the door for her or why it was important that the door shouldn't just be unlocked anyway, but there you go. She goes out to the ruined church and she finds something that is quite hard for me to describe, but basically, if you imagine this, it's a pillowcase, but on the bottom end it has like little doll legs, like rag doll sausage legs, and on the top it has like a little rag doll head, and on the side it has little sausage arms. And it's kind of like rolling around on the floor on this like circle of wood which has been painted with like an arcane symbol. And when she unzips the side of the pillowcase, a cat comes out. So it's like a weird cat doll rag doll bag thing. It's never explained why that was done or what the significance of the cat rag doll bag is. But it was very weird and they felt the need to include it in the film. So I'm going to mention it, but I still don't know what the point of it was. Anywho, suitably freaked out by that, uh, Miss Mayfield is then accosted by, oh my god, her friend Stephanie, wearing some really quite impressive looking ritual robes that look like she made them herself um, out of some curtains and some gold tinfoil. Um, and then a bunch of the village people, but not like the YMCA village people, like the ear get off my land village people, they kind of hold her down on the symbol the woman says some stuff in like fake latin or whatever and then they say oh you're initiated you're one of us so she's been forcibly initiated into this coven or group uh, and that marks the beginning where the plot decides to just take a massive detour away from what actually happens in the book and the ending is actually incredibly dissimilar to what happens in the book so for instance in the book they're going to sacrifice the young girl um elaine who is now called linda it's not really understood why, except, you know, I guess they're witches and they sacrifice people. That's what they do. In this, it's a ritual to extend Stephanie's life by use of magic. And it's unclear if that means she's going to swap bodies with Linda or if Linda's going to die and she's going to get young again or if she's going to stay looking like she does now, but just live longer. Again, not very well explained. But basically, Stephanie thinks that if she has another lifetime in which to learn more about magic, she can become a lot more powerful and do lots of things for mankind. Is basically all we're given to work with. For some reason, she then decides to, in a very Bond villain way, tell Miss Mayfield all about this plan and then show her the ritual. Uh, the ritual basically is to get the girl, who has to be a virgin of a certain age, I think it's like under 15, she has to be sacrificed with a special knife that sacrificed a bunch of people before and the key part is that at the moment of sacrifice no blood must be spilt and prior to the sacrifice no blood must be spilt so the girl can't be hurt is what I took away from that until the sacrifice takes place. From this um, we kind of moved into the final like ritual scene. Um, I'm going to give a slight trigger warning for this although it wasn't incredibly realistic there was some cutting involved so that's going to trigger you I suggest not watching that bit but um it's sort of a weird and slightly funny orgy I didn't think I'd ever have to say those words but a slightly funny orgy mainly because the room is brightly lit even though there's only like two flaming torches on the wall it's like brightly lit with studio lights everyone is wearing 
clothes like they're ordinary full clothes but the hems have been cut into strips like they're in some sort of Robinson Crusoe pageant being put on by the local school and then they get like things that look like lemons but may have just been plastic lemon like balls filled with oil because they kind of spray them on their faces and then rub the oil in while going rah uh, yeah I know and <laughs> and then they just kind of like rub on each other I guess but not in a sexy way sort of like they're in a really narrow aisle of the supermarket and they're both trying to reach for like the same tin of beans it's really weird uh, but yeah they do that and there's a lot of running rubbing around on the floor and they're like grabbing things and eating them sort of like they're pretending to be puppies but not in a kind of orgy-ish way it's just very odd the one good thing about this scene though is that the high priestess stephanie wears like a dope candle hat it kind of looks like um antlers but then on the tips of all the antlers it's got like tiny candles that are actually lit although Knowing what I do know about candles and how fast they burn, those skinny little candles must have had to be replaced several thousand times during the filming of that scene because at one point I think they actually change colour and they go from being white to being black, which is just very weird. But dope candle hats. I'll give it a point for that. Um, then they get the girl in, she's in some sort of trance and she just kind of like twirls around while the lady points at her and... She twirls around for a bit and then twirls around for a bit more and then she gets up on the ritual altar but then she gets off again and does a bit more twirling and then she just gets onto the round wooden symbol thing on the floor and just kind of lies there shaking for a bit and Stephanie starts talking in her fake Latin, goes over to stab her and then Miss Mayfield um, grabs a knife because the butcher has bought like four or five of his knives with him I don't know why, because one, no one in the coven knew it was going to be a sacrifice. Two, if he knew it was going to be a sacrifice, he knows it has to be done with a special knife. Does he just enjoy taking his knives out for an evening walk? It's unclear. But she grabs one of those knives and cuts across her arm, spilling blood. It is weirdly orangey fake blood, and the arm that she cuts is definitely like a foam rubber arm. But there you go. And then she just kind of rubs the car up and down on Stephanie's homemade robes and shouts, no blood must be spilled at the moment of sacrifice. At which point Stephanie rubs her hands in the blood on the robe like it's the first time that she's seeing it, uh, screams, falls down on the floor to show that she is wearing like a very odd pair of hessian wedges um, and then dies just on the ground. And then everything's fine. <laughs> Um, it cuts to um, just, I guess, a time after the ritual and Miss Mayfield is in the schoolroom and Alan is there doing some sort of work. It kind of looks like he's putting bird boxes up on the wall of the classroom, but I've been assured by Wikipedia that they were loudspeakers. I don't know why you would need those, but apparently that's what he's putting up and everything is lovely and normal and Miss Mayfield wins, so all the witches are gone somehow they've moved out it's a very odd film the book itself as you probably heard if you listened to the other review i mean it didn't exactly blow my socks off in terms of excitement um, and interestingness but at least it managed not to be really fucking silly uh, and the film does come across as being quite silly I think either mostly because it's dated and obviously it was trying to not be to I guess salacious um, or violent or whatever for the audience at the time but even in the book I think and I think it worked better in the book it doesn't really describe the orgy or what's going on it kind of just describes Miss Mayfield being appalled by it and saying things like she never thought she would live to see such horrifying sights as these and things like that you can't really do that in a film, you have to show those things. So it's kind of a weird choice to make it as a film at a time when you're going to have to say, OK, look, guys, you know the orgy scene at the end of the book? Everyone's going to keep their clothes on and we're going to replace any actual sex acts with weird oil lemons. And you're just going to squeeze them on your face and go, rah. Sound good? 
great. Slightly odd. Um, I think, to be honest, if they remade the film today, it might be a bit more effective. Um, I did think that they were going to remake it, given the like re-release of the book with like a new modern cover and such, but apparently there is no remake in the works. Also, I didn't really like the... Um, the whole like witch doctor thing that they were doing with the thing they just sort of added that in when it wasn't in the book um and it just felt a bit like one very odd and made up and two kind of racist again it's an old film but still it's so in terms of watching this as like a kind of pre-wicker man attempt at a similarly wicker man-y plot it's not that great i don't really recommend it um I mean, if it gets on Netflix at any point, which it won't, because even they wouldn't show this and they show some garbage on there, um, then I would maybe watch it for like a bad film night and have a giggle, if that's the kind of thing you like to do. I myself love a bad film night, so I might watch this again with friends who can take the piss out of it with me. But aside from that, I can't really see myself recommending this to anyone like it's not witchy enough to be witchily satisfying it's not horror enough to be satisfying from like a an occult horror perspective so it doesn't really tick either of my boxes for witch fulfillment i hope you've enjoyed this review remember you can get in touch on twitter which is at witchfix and you can get in touch via gmail which is witchfixpodcast at gmail.com you can also check the description box to see how you can donate to the Patreon. And if you want to buy anything from the Amazon wishlist for the podcast that is available through the Twitter account, you might have to scroll back a little ways to find it, but I post it up there quite regularly. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!